Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at communications in Traveler. And I don't mean ship to ship, that's covered pretty well in the rules. Communications between person to person on the planet. More than once at my table, players have separated on the planet to go do different things. And they said, I call the other guy and I say, how? You don't have anything on your sheet that shows interpersonal communication. Now, a lot of that has gone away since we all have cell phones. And there is the cell phone analog in here for it. But it's important that that stuff appear on the player character sheet because there are rules that govern some of these things. And not only have I seen it at my table, there have been a couple of actual play travelers that I've watched on uh, YouTube where the group has realized once they separated, they actually have no communication device. So here we go. We're going to take a look at some personal communication devices you can carry around with you on planet and hook up to the planetary system and uh, talk to one another. Communication is always important. Also, quick reminder, please subscribe if you haven't already, and please go ahead and take a look at the Patreon. If there's anything you can do to help out there, that'd be great. Back to the important stuff from the Central Supply Catalog 2023 update. Communications, today on page 121. Communications, always important in any relationship. My wife and I, before we got married, went through some uh, kind of marriage preparation counseling through our church, and one of the things that the presenters, a uh, hus married husband and wife, uh, told us was communication was the single most important thing in any relationship. Unfortunately, we don't have time to cover it. True story. Anyway, communications. Communications technology merges with computerization at higher tech levels. And uh, we get a good look. I'm going to blow these up so we can see the individual things a little bit better. Retro tech variants uh, goes into how the variants can be cheaper. Uh, but we start out with a surveillance bug. This bug is a hidden microphone or a tiny camera. And they go all the way from tech level 5 audio only at 50 credits. Audio and visual at tech 7 for 100 credits. Tech 9 sees audio, visual, or data at 200. Tech 11 sees audio, visual, and data at 300. Tech level 13, audio, visual, data, bioscan with computer 0 at 400. And tech level five, 15, Audio, visual, data, bioscan, and computer. 500 credits. Now, just because a bug exists doesn't mean you have access to get it. Getting a tech level 15 bug may not be something you can do on a tech level 12 world, even if you have connections in low places. And then down below here, it goes ahead and it tells us what the various designations mean. Audio is anything it hears. Video, visual is anything it sees. Data is it, uh, if it attached to computer skin system, the bug can search and copy data from the computer. Bug cannot breach computer security on its own, but if a user accesses the computer in the bug's presence, the bug can read the data. Bioscan, the bug has basic biological scanner, allowing it to sample the area for DNA traces, chemical taint, and so forth. It connects the information, collects the information, but does not analyze it. And then Computer X, it has an onboard computer rated 0 or 1, allowing use of simple agent, decryptor, or intrusion packages. The bug can be active or passive. An active bug, bug will actually transmit to you, but has a better chance of being detected. Comdots. In the early days of Traveler, my players are always wandering around with comdots. I realize now that the uh, range on comdots is not that great. Uh, comdots, a tiny microphone slash speaker and transmitter, ranging in size from a few centimeters to a few millimeters. It's capable of interfacing with another communications device and relaying messages back and forth. Comdots have a range of only a few meters and are usually used as hand-free communicators, but can also be used as improvised bugs or throat microphones. At tech level 12, comdots are able to decipher and transmit sub-vocal communications, include a tiny, nearly imperceptible earpiece to allow communications that are effectively silent. That was what we always liked about it. You could do the whole throat talk thing once you got used to doing it. Nobody really even knew you were talking. Uh, so the basic comdot is 10, tech level 10, hands-free vocal commenter, commentator, 10 credits, and the improved is Tech 12, hands-free sub-vocal commentator, also 10 credits. So there we have a nice picture of the bug and the com dot. Next, we look at the holographic display. A holographic display is a smaller version of a holographic projector, which we'll get to in just a second. The display will create a three-dimensional image in the space above it to a range of about 30 centimeters, as you see here. Displays are often integrated with, into other devices, especially at Tech Level 12, when their mass becomes negligible. The properties of the holograms produced by the display are detailed in the holographic projector description. So basic is tech level 9, translucent moving holograph. It's 2 kilogram weight, 
and at 800 credits. Improved is Tech 11. Realistic Moving Holograph, 1 kilogram and costs 1,000 credits. And Enhanced, Tech 12, True to Life Moving Holograph, no in appreciable uh, increase in weight, 1,000 credit cost. Is a holographic display and then there's a mobile com. A holographic projector is a briefcase sized box that when activated creates a three-dimensional image in the space around it to a range of three meters. When in first introduced, the images are obviously not real, but then they get better and better and enhanced versions can create true-to-life images. Advanced projectors are small enough to be installed as just another integral port on a handheld electronic device. So these could be used. I see a lot of benefits for the holographic projector for some kind of infiltration mission uh, where you could just carry the thing on your person and have it surround you in an illusion that you look like something else. Look at that big Aslan sliding down the hallway when in fact it's just you, you small human. A basic holographic projector, tech level 9, translucent moving holograph, 6 kilogram weight, 1000 cost. Improved tech level 11, realistic moving holograph, 3 kilograms, 2000 cost. Enhanced tech level 12, true to life moving holograph, 1 kilogram, 10,000 credits, advanced tech level 14, small form factor, and 25,000 credits. So that would be a really good infiltration device also. A mobile com. It's a portable telecommunications device, computer camera ranging in size from a bulky handset to a slim watch or pen-like cylinder. In today's world, they, we call them mobile phones or cell phones. Larger comms have physical controls and screens, while smaller units either project data and control displays on nearby surfaces have fold-out plastic screens or connect to cybernetics. Comms have only short-range transmission and reception capabilities, typically 5 kilometers, but most technologically advanced worlds have worldwide, planet-wide comm networks, allowing the user to send messages and access data anywhere. At higher tech levels, mobile comms merge entirely with portal computers, which is on page 67. Mobile comm of tech level 10 or greater will have the equivalent computing power of a portable computer available two le tech levels earlier. So the mobile com, your basic is tech level 6, audio only. Uh, cost is 50 credits. It's early cell phone. Improved tech level 8, audio and visual with computer zero. F 150 credits, and that would be about what we have now in our pockets. Advanced, multiple forms of data, computer 1, and 500 uh, credit cost. I'll have negligible weight. A transceiver. Uh, old people like me know them as walkie-talkies. Transceiver is a standalone communications device, in other words, a two-way radio. Unlike mobile comm, this one doesn't rely on a network. It goes in basically line of sight or bounces off of something. Most transceivers are radio or laser-based. Mason communicators exist, but are generally not easily portable or available publicly. And to reach orbits reliably, a transceiver requires a range of 500 kilometers. Uh, increased tech levels, they become more powerful and more portable. There's the radio transceiver. I'm not going to read the whole list. But you start at tech level 5, which is 5 kilometer distance, to tech level 12, which is interplanetary. And then laser transceivers require line of sight to operate and are often restricted by the curvature of a planet or atmospheric effects. If you have a very smoggy, uh, particle-heavy atmosphere, the laser is not going to be able to penetrate. Range uh, in space only limited by diffraction uh, effects, which may allow for communications across interplanetary distances. Laser transceivers decrease in mass and, cross, uh, in mass and cost like other electronic devices. And again, this is line of sight. So if you're going to uh, something beyond the curvature of the planet you're standing on, you have to bounce it off of a satellite or other receptor in order for this to continue on. Laser transceiver has a regional range, 500 kilometers, 2,500 cost at a kilogram and a half, at tech level 9, tech level 11, still regional at half a kilometer, sorry, half a kilogram, 500 kilometer, 1,500 cost, and tech level 13, same range, no appreciable weight, and the cost is 500 credits. Then we have Mason transceivers. They're bulky devices requiring fine-tuning and precise location information, of communication nodes. They're almost impossible to jam or intercept. They send the mesons along. The mesons can pass through anything, including through the planet itself. But you have to know where the receiver is when you transmit. So these are not uh, just uh, beam me up Scotty type things. You have to know exactly where you're sending the message. Tech level 12, the range is planetary, 200 kilogram, 50,000 cost. Tech level 12, interplanetary, 500 kilogram, 
ten thousand or a hundred thousand cost. Tackle level fourteen, planetary fifty thousand kilometer, hundred kilograms, twenty five thousand credits, and tackle level fourteen, interplanetary two hundred kilograms at fifty thousand credits. So these are not uh, necessarily cheap options. The the Mason is probably more of a military black ops uh, or criminal type thing rather than just a, a group of travelers. And then transceivers options often include additional features. Uh, this would be computer. It'll upgrade the computer. And encryption, which means you can scramble your, your code. And that gives nice rules on how to break an encryption based on the tech level of the device versus the tech level you're using to decrypt it versus your skill. Satellite uplink allows radio communication between the satellite, which is what we all have, of course. I've always thought it was funny to call my wife, who's in the house finishing getting ready to go somewhere, from the car in the driveway, and the idea that the the, the beam travels, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles, bounces off a satellite, and goes back to my kitchen, which is, you know, 30 feet away. I've always found that amusing as can be. I've even called my son from the family room to his bedroom, which is directly above where I sit in the family room. And again, we've got about eight feet, eight feet between us on two different floors of the house, but uh, the, the beam goes for hundreds of miles, bounces off the satellite, and comes back to his room to annoy him. And there you have it. That's communications. Most important part of any relationship, communication. And especially if your travelers are doing some hijinks on a planet, they're going to want reliable communications. As a GM, you have to remember, communications can often be picked up. You may not be able to tell exactly what it is, but you can tell that somebody in that room is transmitting something. A uh, good way to kind of bury that in the background is to use the equivalent of the cell phone and have it be one of many that are transmitting out of the area. So there's a lot of fun you can have with this, a lot of ways you can get caught with it, a lot of ways you can get away with stuff. So there you have it. I hope you liked it. Uh, just a little look at communications between people in Traveler. If you like what you heard and saw, please like and subscribe. Go ahead and leave any comments uh, below. I appreciate feedback. And uh, I'll see you next time on page 121.